curiously. In 1932, Gabrielle Chanel, long known for her costume jewelry featuring pearls of the Orient and colorful gems, turns her attention to the most precious of stones, the diamond. Surrender pitilessly, still reeling from the 1929 crisis, the diamond merchants single out Mademoiselle Chanel over the grand jewelers of the Place Vendôme to give diamond its true brilliance. So begins the most ephemeral, the most legendary of collections. Simply, Gabrielle Chanel simplifies jewelry settings, rendering the previous styles out of date. No longer is the stone itself supreme, but as in couture, line and pattern. She freely mounts and repurposes her diamonds as she once had dismantled the jewels given by the Duke of Westminster to create new ornaments. Resolutely, she makes fluidity a principle and liberty a virtue, removing clasps, lengthening necklaces, sending comets sparkling across shoulders and showering the décolletage with stars. I want, she said, jewels that slip between the fingers of a woman like a ribbon. Poetically, Gabrielle Chanel plucks the stars out of the Parisian sky. I wanted to shower women in constellations, the stars, stars of all sizes to sparkle in their hair. Symbolically, she selects five themes for the Bijoux de Diamant collection. Five, her lucky number, the key to her style, expressed in the magic of stars, the rays of the sun, the fluidity of ribbon, the insouciance of fringe, and the lightness of feathers. Secretly, Mademoiselle illuminates the darkest period of her childhood by recreating in diamonds, stars, crescent moons, suns, and crosses of Malta, which were laid out in the paving stones of the Abbey of Aubazine, upon which the young orphan tread every day on her way to Mass. Audaciously, Gabrielle Chanel does not exhibit her jewelry in her boutique on the Rue Cambon, but in her own home at 29 Faubourg Saint Honoré. Refusing display cases and black velvet cushions, she prefers to show her jewels on simple wax mannequins, their hair styled and faces touched with makeup. Furiously, the male-dominated world of the Place Vendôme demands that the jewels be disassembled after the exhibition, but as Mademoiselle said, are not the most beautiful things made to circulate. Finally, the 1932 collection will be Gabrielle Chanel's first and only high jewelry collection. But with it, she establishes a timeless code, creativity over ostentation, lightness over exaggeration. The innovations of the first couturier to venture into the Place Vendôme spread like wildfire, waking the world of fine jewellery from its slumber. Brilliantly, today's collections are enriched by those of yesterday, reinterpreting stars, fringes and ribbons, and invoking other elements of the universe of Mademoiselle, the camellia, the lion, the pearl. Insolently, today a diamond necklace worn over a t-shirt becomes an evidence, letter, an elegance, an unspoken homage to one for whom beauty was not an obligation or a convention, but simply a way of being, an allure. Freely, these are the women who choose Chanel diamonds. Today, their jewels are no longer trophies given by admirers, but symbols of liberty. A cluster of diamonds on the jacket, on the skin, or in the hair, adorning them with their brilliance, their strength, and their fire. Eternally, Chanel and the diamond.